Dan Dawson, great to speak with you here in Blackpool at the World Match Play. Wanted to take a moment and talk about North American darts. We recently just had the U.S. Darts Masters. What's the overall uh, thought on how that went? I mean, it was great, wasn't it? I mean, amazing venue, amazing tournament. The whole point about the World Series is trying to give a platform for players from these different parts of the world to compete against the big boys, and the North Americans did compete. Obviously, Jeff Smith's gone and made the final there. Yeah, well, he got annihilated in the final, but the stuff he produced to get there was superb, and that's what we want to see. And on a personal note for Jeff... I'm hoping that that's the launch pad that he needs for the back end of this year to basically stay on the tour. But yeah, I think we're seeing, it, it has surprised me in the short amount of time that we've been in New York for those World Series events and the North American Championship that goes with it, that the, the numbers that we've seen turning up to watch it, it feels like a step forward, certainly feels like a step forward from Vegas. And that's something they've got to build upon. I think there's a bit more noise around darts. I, I still think it's a, not an impossibly difficult market to crack, but it seems to be making progress. And as long as there's forward movement, then that's what the sport needs. You look at Vegas, I mean, we were a quiet crowd. You look at New York, it was electric in there. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, I'm, I'm still slightly disappointed. The one thing that was missing, there were no, uh, I mean, obviously Danny Lorby wasn't there, but there were no Danny Lorby TIFOs. Like, <laughs> uh, I wanted to see, like, a, a Matt Campbell banner being unfurled or something. But the crowds have been good, and they they get it. And they've even, like, when they're doing stand-up If You Love the Darts, they're even getting the intonation right. Because in Vegas, they never got that right. It was, they, they, they just, there's still a bit of learning to do. But... It, it's good. It's a step forward, and that's when it's got to be constant progress. And the work the CDC is doing, the World Series events, and look, it wouldn't surprise me if over the next maybe a couple of years we saw another North American event. I don't know. I certainly know they'd like to do it. They're looking at it. It's all about logistics and where you fit it in a very tight calendar. But I think it would be brilliant if we could have two events on the calendar where it's that platform for North American players to shine. You're 100% correct there and a lot of people don't realize but the first man to lift this title here in Blackpool is Larry Butler, American. Mm. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I mean one of the biggest surprises in, <laughs> in darts history, wouldn't it? And it's, you know, that's he put his name in the record books. The thing is, with this is the thing with North American darts. They've had figureheads. You know, what you want, you want a, a sort of system, you want a platform for people to play. And you want a way for, somebody can pick up a set of darts and just play in their, you know, front room. And then they walk out of their house and they might be fully equipped to go and be really competitive at a quite high level. That's one of the beauties of this game. People can just emerge from their house as almost fully formed dart players. John Parr was one of those guys. He had no idea how good he was until he just walked out and started playing. He was like, Man, I am really good. He was just watching the lakeside on the telly and get into that sort of level and then went and won the flipping thing. There is, you, you don't, it doesn't take long necessarily if a player is that good to go from absolutely nowhere to being a real figurehead. Now, North America has had figureheads. Larry Butler was one of them, of course. John Parr is the great one, a three-time world champion. And yet, it hasn't really taken the huge strides that the sport would like in that part of the world. We've seen it in, you know, Australasia. Australia, obviously, Simon Whitlock has been a big figurehead. Uh, before him, uh, we've, we've, had, we've had other great Aussie players. But, and now we've got Damon Hetter, of course, they help. It really, really helps. What we need now is the next John Parr or the next Larry Butler to come through. And there are candidates, of course. There are. You know, Matt Campbell is, is doing some great stuff. I, I would like to see, I expect to see Matt Campbell get here to the Winter Gardens at some point over the coming years. I think he's good enough. I think he's got the game. But he is going to have to improve. He is going to have to become more consistent. And I hope that being on the tour, it's, that's the best way to learn. Playing against the best in the world, week in, week out, it gets you better. Mensor Sulevich is perhaps the best example of that, I think. Mensor is a player, everybody knew that he was good, he had talent, but until he started playing on the tour, playing regularly against the best, I don't think even he knew how good he could be. And ultimately, he nearly won this one year, only lost the greatest final in history at the match play to Gary Anderson in the longest final ever, and, and it did become a major champion, of course. That's the sort of model that... North America has to follow and North American players have to follow. It can be done, it's hard work and only a very few will reach the very top, but if you get one who does, they can be the real sort of iconic, totemic figure for the sport in that part of the country. 
hard work can pay off. Dan, appreciate your time here in Blackpool speaking with us. Uh, you're very welcome. And may I commend you on your mic technique because that's far better than baggages. I've not got <laughs> hit in the face once. That's to you, Danny. You know, you know it's irresponsible and it's unacceptable. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Appreciate <laughs> no worries, it. Man.